Good morning. Thank you for joining us and Off the Press and PLUS TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Um, it's the first day of the lockdown. I hope you're staying safe at home. And if you must step out, always remember to wash your hands. I'll introduce my guest now to help make sense of some of these headlines. Mm -hmm. That's Dr. Femi Ido at Degoke, Public Affairs Analyst. Pleasure to have your company. Good morning, Felicity. Thank you. Um, how was the road on your way? Were there movements or? Uh, there were a few, just very few movements. Probably essential yes, workers. Yes, yeah, and then we saw the waste truck and uh, some police officers. Essentials, yeah. Okay. Let's start with the nation. And this morning, a bit of a cherry news, I would think. Um, I murdered coronavirus, says discharged yeah. survivor. That's the cherry news on the front page. Osho B relieves battle against COVID-19 at Lagos Isolation Center. Uh, her picture is on the front page, looking very, look at her, very confident and defiant and thankful uh, that she's all right. Uh, there are some other stories. Uh, inside the paper, you will see Buhari signs COVID-19 law, chloroquine production begins. Uh, WHO advocates respiratory hygiene, social welfare. Elumelu tests negative, among other um, stories on the side. Just an update of um, efforts with the fight against the pandemic. Uh, where you find them is also uh, on the front page. Um, and CDC tracing 6,000 contacts. You're looking at it right now. And mm. yes, I'm sure it's a bit uh, scary. Mm. Uh, Boko Haram commander among over 100 killed, uh, says um, uh, DHQ. And there's a countdown of uh, those affected globally on the front page. You can see the figure. I'm very sure it has increased by now. Um, from 764, but that is at last count uh, by the nation newspaper in Nigeria. We now have 131 uh, cases. Okay, uh, Femi. Yeah, good morning. We're tracing 6,000 contacts. Mm. But before you get to that, let's look at the lady that survived this. So it's really not a death sentence. Yes, it's, 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 from the onset, we've all known that it's not a um, death sentence. And then the panic. The only challenge that we had in this part of Nigeria was our preparedness, our preparation, and our mitigating uh, actions before we actually had uh, the first uh, case. Yeah. And then the after that, we waited a while before we actually did a lot of things. But that's in the past now. It's where we are now. Uh, the president finally came out and said... After much clamoring, yeah, after much talk... Yeah. And he did what he did, which, to a large extent, some of the speech were very good to, 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 to behold and say, okay, yeah, they might have been thinking how they would do it, and that's why it took him time to come out. But on the lady who's come out to say she defeated um, coronavirus, we must give credit to Lagos State. The Lagos State governor and his team, uh, for me, have been in the lead for the whole nation. They've been leading... On the, on the front. Yeah, and that's have, why. We have the highest number of cases. Yeah, because uh, Lagos it, it has a main airport in Nigeria, and most of, uh, over 90% of it are imported. The, this thing was brought from overseas. So we must commend the effort of Lagos State. Even before the federal government actually announced the lockdown, Lagos had started a partial lockdown by closing down and employing the uh, private sectors to make sure that their staff work from home. And that's, that's commendable. And uh, even now, I had Lagos State have put some uh, emergency marketplaces around some local authorities, local government, about 50 places. Well, the, so, the locations are not that widely known at the moment. We the, hear that they are available, but yeah. it's not been pushed forward, like people around there to know that there is a local market. So probably the process is still ongoing. Yeah, because I, like, why I'm commending Lagos State, because I got a text yesterday. No. saying to confirm if I still live in my address and then they were going to deliver some palliatives. Really? Yeah, even my mother God, got well. on the phone. So, so um, nice. there's some, I know some people say it's only when you have the last track card that you get that. Yeah, but it's, it's now, what, I'm, what I've always said is because maybe this is exposing us to let us know that we've always done things wrongly. That we now, by the end of this whole pandemic, 
we might we we'll now be able to rearrange ourselves because Nigeria seems to be disorganized. Okay, let's see other headlines this morning. Mike Nde test positive for COVID-19, lockdown. CBN stops check clearing, banks to remain open. Uh, there is partial service. Yeah. Uh, if you've been following the news, you probably would have seen it. Uh, Listen, rather, a little earlier. Shoinka kicks as Malami defends Buhari's action, governor's back president. Lasma GM is dead, mm. or Lakbe is dead. Landlord's wife slashes tenant's face. Uh, in spite of all of this, we still have some yeah. other issues going on. Um, yeah. Well, let's take a look at the Shoinka uh, kicking as uh, Malami defends Buhari's action. Uh, he's, he's taking the legal route now, as announced by Adeshino. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, in the circumstances, uh, should there be criticism, really? I, personally, I don't think they should, but uh, some people, I don't think they should, the president or the presidency should have been criticized for, lock, for the lockdown in the three major uh, cities that have been affected. But I guess these, uh, the, the, uh, Professor Wolesha Inka is known for his human rights activists, him and all, all the lawyers, who was, the senior lawyers talking. We might have said, we might agree that because of what they've done, has made the president now to sign the COVID-19 regulation. So, in, so we it need- served the purpose. Yes, it served the purpose. But I think in the face of what we're facing, the prayer, the, some lawyer friend told me that it was a force major. Some lawyers didn't agree with the- Yeah, there was but, a divided yeah. space on so, that. Yeah. A friend said to me, it was, it was like a business contract. It was a force major. When you are, you are forced to do something outside the contract because of the situation, the prevailing situation, which is uh, understandable on the president's side. There's been a lot of worries about governors uh, testing positive for the virus. And we have McKinney, we have El Rufai. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's worry that they might... Um, this might affect the effectiveness of the task force or the measures that has been put in place. And the governors have done their best to allay these fears, but there still persists some worry. What do you have to say to that? Well, on the, the political ruling class being testing positive, that's the governor, mostly the governor. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's, uh, it's as a result of irresponsibility in government because they feel where the where the, we, we're in control. Because when, during, after we've had our first two, three cases, the, um, the chief of staff went outside the country to Germany and Egypt, countries who are of high risk, and he came back. He didn't get tested. He didn't go on self-isolation. He was busy having meetings. And we heard that he had meetings with about 16 governors, which has made some of the governors to go and self take the test, self-isolate. But should you wait till that? That's why I call it irresponsibility. Immediately you got back. The NCDC director general, and led by example when he went to China, as soon as he came back, everything he was doing, he was doing from isolation. He was communicating with the minister. He yeah, came but, back. But my, my question is, I, 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 I would rather we don't increase the... Um, concerns like do you really think it will affect the running them them testing positive I'm sure most of them have learned their lessons yeah. now them testing positive do you think it will affect the efforts that's been um, towards making sure that the people don't suffer unnecessarily ideally it shouldn't if they had the proper structure and uh, system in place if the government had been not been running on a one-man show that if I'm not present the gov they have commissioners. They have uh, head of agencies who are supposed to run this uh, strategy. It's just for them to be briefed and they can communicate even from isolation. I've seen other countries where their prime minister have tested positive and they are doing video conferencing. Yes, so I don't, I don't think it should. All right, let's go to the next paper, and that's the Nigerian Tribune. On the front page, they're leading with Tashe marking day testing positive. 20 new cases confirmed. Uh, a couple of riders for you uh, on the front page as well. Just beneath that story, you have NCDC tracing 6,000 contacts. Nigeria records second death. Um, a lady who tested positive for coronavirus discharged narrates her experience. You find uh, details on page 12 of the paper. Um, we also have uh, 
The, the manufacturing of chloroquine for possible clinical tests, that's uh, NAFDAG ordering that to happen, and then uh, some other contributions on the front page. IGP sets up panel to probe Akura explosion. Buhari right on restriction of movement order. That's the AGF speaking. Uh, we also have this one, lockdown order, financial institutions allowed to operate, FG. Your ID card is your pass. Minister tells journalists, Gulf shifts Ogun lockdown to Friday. Markets witness rush prices, SAR. Uh, that's uh, another one for you. Um, not, uh, I mean, not unexpected, really. The price is skyrocketing. Yeah. Um, I was shocked for most of the people that live on the island. You, we tend to get these bags of water because the water is not as good as it should be. And then something that you sell, I mean, six. Now I hear you sell a bag. It's like 250, something mm. you buy 100 mm. or 300, depending on who you're asking. Um, I also know that the, the food of items in my face mask that you ideally buy 100 naira or 200 naira is now 500. Some people are selling it for 600. And then you have food items, a basket. Some reports that we've had here has shown that. What worries you really about this kind of behavior among Nigerians? Because this is going to be for a little while. Should people be exploiting tragedy for gains? People should not. That's the first. But the, the foundational problem, I will always take it back to the, gov the governance system. Because when this all started, the government should have put some measures in place. It should be a, a long-term strategy. And like you said, there are uh, social amenities that should have been provided by, from the local government. And when it becomes uh, uh, a social, um, a private business, you cannot tell the, uh, the businessman what he should do because it will give excuse as well that these are my cost of production, things have gone up for myself, and that's, he has to pass it on to his product. So it's, it's basically our system, I've said it, it at, at this uh, pandemic is actually exposing uh, our inefficiencies in running our day-to-day -day activity. We don't have water, uh, pipe bomb water. So everybody, even electricity, mm -hmm. uh, everybody's stuck in their house now with uh, fuel. fuel. And which is dangerous yeah. as well. And it's in one of the news that because of gas, lack of gas now, about 4,000 megawatt of electricity will be shut down. So we are... IGP sets up panel to probe the Akure explosion. That's also been a bit of an issue. The yeah. um, Adams, um, Ghani Adams, yeah. uh, we have the likes of um, uh, Kani um, Femi Kayode. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we have the Afeni Ferry, all of them yeah. uh, talking about that explosion, saying something is not quite right. Yeah. Um, what do you take about, take on, what's your take on this news that the IGP has set up a panel to well, probe? It. Scientists have already told us what happened. That, that's uh, that's um, that's by from my angle, uh, and that's what I was going to say. Um, when I heard the news, the first thing that came to mind was the asteroid eight that was that was predicted like a few days before, and the time was given that it was going to be uh, that particular day. And but because the governor of the state came out and said it was an explosion from the ammunition that they were moving. Yeah, but he's sharing the information he got from the security agencies, yeah. and they are insisting yeah. that that's what happened. So why, really? Well, maybe, maybe that's what happened. We don't know. <laughs> so that's why this, uh, uh, the panel is good. Let them do their findings. And then we need some independent investigations, as well, investigators as well. The scientist now needs to come to play, and then maybe we can have two results. And then we can now compare notes and see who is telling us the truth. Okay, these two headlines quickly before we move on to the punch. Um, editors condemn attacks on newspapers, delivery vans, staff, and then the only prescribes traditional Medicare as cure for coronavirus. Pick one from the two, please. Yeah, the attack on the news media. You see, I, I would take it back to the government. You are locking down. Like our, the governor of Lagos State said yesterday, he was employing the uh, security uh, agencies to be more humane. humane. So those are the things, because we know who we are. We know how a lot of Nigerians behave. They will take advantage of this and then begin to molest 
the, the innocent people. Okay, uh, let's go to the punch now. Uh, Mabuja Lagos Ogun lockdown. Uh, Shoinka Sam, AGF fight over legality of Buhari's directive. Um, uh, some would say this is a mute point now because there's, there's now a legislation. But what, what's yeah. your thought on it? Yeah, my <laughs> thought is sometimes... Yeah, you've actually said that. Yeah, sometimes yeah. We don't do, you don't do criticism for doing its sake. Let all be... Yeah, I know they have the legal reasons. But like another legal, t uh, legal side of it says it was a force majeure. At that point, the man had to, and we were the one clamoring and saying, we need our president to talk to us. Uh, the thing you mentioned earlier about electricity is captured yeah. here. Yeah. Is that electricity tariff to increase Wednesday. Power supply worsens as gas unavailability stores 14,156 megawatts. You'll yeah. find details on page 23 and 24. Uh, Nigeria economy already fragile before COVID-19 pandemic. That's the Minister of uh, Finance yeah. talking, Ahmed. Um, let's see. Naira plunges further, sells for 412 Naira to a dollar. Uh, we also have other stories. IG raises panel. We've uh, talked about that. Fund seekers drown. Two fund seekers drown in equity. And then Quara Restriction Task Force shuts church, arrest transporters. Cross River turns back 35 U.S. oil workers, demands thorough screening. Four killed during Colty's hoodlums clash in Lagos. Bandits invade Ogun community. Gone down inspector, pastor, and uh, a man. Uh, which of these uh, headlines would you want to take on quickly? Well, the last one you mentioned, let me just quickly talk about it. Even in the midst of this uh, coronavirus pandemic, we're still dealing with our own indigenous problems. Now bandits, Colty's, they're still going on. We still have Boko Haram. So I, it's, it's a, it's, for me, it's a time for sober reflection for even Nigerians to begin to decide how we want to live, how we want to be governed, and how we intend to make this country a better place for living. That, and then the Minister for Finance talking yeah. about that the, our economy had already been fragile. I'm, I'm so happy and ex excited that the truth is finally coming out. Because it seems this whole lockdown, global lockdown, as I call it, is making us see that, oh, look, we, we've just been living in this state, just bouncing around thinking we have the economic power, which we did not. Our border, border it was locked since August last year, before this breakout. Up to now, it's not open. And then we see we, all the foreign things that we say we have banned are still finding their way into the system. All so, right. I guess that's where we're at. Sorry to cut you off so quickly. Right. Thank you so much for your pleasure. thoughts on the program. Yeah. And of course, thank you for watching thus far. Uh, there are more programs here on Plus TV Africa. Don't go away. Remember, it's basic hygiene and stay home. That's what the government has ordered. That's the only way we can help with the spread of this pandemic. You take care of yourself. I will see you later. Bye for now.